My, our speaker today is Dr. Alex Shakarov of the um, Rotary Foundation Recognition and Grants. So he's going to, Alex has a PhD um, and he is the 6980 Foundation Chair. He is retired as a business consultant in medical product development. He has a BS in physics from Stevens Institute of Technology, MS and PhD in applied physics from Harvard University. Um, now the, 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 that division is now called the Howard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Alex has, a, a, has held a variety of research and management positions in the medical device industry for more than 20, 20 years. Retired from Alcon Laboratories to start a consulting practice in 2008. Alex joined Rotary in January 2011 upon the advice and recommendation of our late, late past district governor, Randy Raweiser. Most recently, Alex has devoted significant efforts to the nonprofit realm with a special interest in Rotary Foundation. Alex worked on grants with Drastic Rotary Foundation Chair Joe Weber. And I know, Alex, I have worked with you for an international grant. Too. He's, he's well worth and he can definitely go out of his way to help and really appreciate all the efforts you have done. And he was the president of the Rotary Club of Oviedo for the Rotary year 2015-16 and the Rotary Rotarian of the Year or for his club in 2011-12. So he is very distinguished and very well known in, in, in our district. And I'm pretty sure in the, in, in the, as, a, as a Rotarian, uh, much more than in our, just our district. And he enjoys cooking, choral, personal fitness, endurance running. I didn't know that, okay? And fighting cancer. All right, we love to hear from you, Alex, and share your wealth of knowledge and um, make us all better Rotarians. Thank you. You're so awesome. Uh, Anthony, that was a, a wonderful, it made me sound like I'm somebody, you know? Um, okay, thank you so much. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the foundation. Uh, I mentioned this at our global, at our district grant, uh, no, at our training assembly. So if anybody was there, you probably heard this, but. Uh, I can speak to the mission of the Rotary Foundation. Your foundation transforms donations from Rotarians and friends of Rotarians into global humanitarian <laughs> service projects that change lives. The mission of the Rotary Foundation of Rotary International is to enable Rotarians to advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace through the improvement of health, the support of education, and the alleviation of poverty. Doing good in the world has been the foundation's mission for over 100 years. And the Polio Plus, Plus program, which is a special fund within Rotary Foundation, um, has um, donated over a million and a half dollars, I think, to the Polio Plus eradication effort. Um, if you add in the Rotary Peace Fellowships and all of the grants, global grants, I believe it's uh, over four billion has been issued from the foundation to, to projects around the world. So you, you have something to really be proud of when you give to the foundation. Uh, and I know your club has been very generous and we're gonna to speak to that in a moment as soon as I can get my slides to show. But um, I just wanted to do that preamble so that we didn't have to cover that. Um, also, I can say that the Charity Navigator rating for the Rotary Foundation has been uh, four stars, which is the highest you can get. And it's been that way for 12 years in a row, at least through the last year that they report on, which is through August 1st of 2019. So soon enough, I guess they'll close out the next year and we'll see if we made it again for a 13th year in a row. But it's a great organization. Most all the money goes to the causes, as you know, very little administrative overhead because so much is done by volunteers like you and, and me and everybody else that helps out on RI stuff and doesn't get paid for it. So that's again, something to state. Uh, Polio Plus in the year, fiscal year, June, ending June of 2018, which is the last one I could find on Charity Navigator, showed uh, 160 million went to Polio Plus, 
which is about half of the whole program's expenses for the foundation. And the rest of it, the bulk went to Rotary grants, global grants and district grants, and then a small amount for, to donor advised funds, specialized funds that have very specific purposes, about 4% went to that. So that's kind of the overview of how much we give, how much of a world impact we have. It's pretty substantial for a small group, relatively small group of people. Um, and you know that we have a, a seat on the, at the UN. So that's another cool thing that I don't think any other organization, civic organization like Rotary has, uh, has such a seat at the table. So that's uh, the General Assembly. We actually have somebody there at the General Assembly who has authority to speak there. So this is our foundation committee as it stands today. We have, I, I rehired district, past district governor Cindy for a new job and she was very uh, keen to help out on annual funds. So she'll be helping me with the approaches that we make to help raise annual fund money. Polio Plus, we have a new person getting involved, also from her club, Apopka, Michael Franklin, and I'm looking for him for ideas that we can share with the rest of the district for things that clubs can do as we approach the polio uh, day in October. Every year we have one, as you know, I think it's October 24th, and that day is often the day that clubs will do projects or around that time to help raise money for polio. The district gives a substantial amount. I will share with you that a, a decision was made actually before I took over as foundation chair, which I don't object to, that the district monies that would become available as of July 1st, which is just a week ago, uh, some of that would be apportioned to Polio Plus. In fact, $26,000 of our BDF was directed to Polio Plus. So we've already had one success for the year, and that was a commitment made even before the year started when now District Governor Mike, Mike Vernon went to his International Assembly where he gets trained to be a governor and meet other governors from around the world. They asked all the governors to step up and make firm commitments for polio eradication monies and we approved that he gets 26,000. So that's great. That's more than we approved from the district in 2019-20. So the year that just closed, I think it was $20,000 committed from the district. And then our clubs found another $14,000, which is tremendous. In this challenging year, they found another 14 to bring us up to about 34,000 as a district, which is great, really great. So that was, uh, Michael Help us there. A uh, person in my club, Dan D. Domenico, is going to help us on the Paul Harris Society to recognize and appreciate all of those people who give at the level of $1,000 or more to Rotary Foundation each and every year and have committed to doing that. District uh, DDF Administrator, you've been introduced to if you've gone to the District Grant Training, is Bob Shido. He's done it, I think, for 10 years. This may be his last. So we're gonna to have to look for someone who would like to take over what is um, a pretty substantial little job with um, bookkeeping. I'd say it would be somebody who would be pretty good at bookkeeping, keeping track of figures, spreadsheeting, and staying on top of their emails as things come through. The grants chair is again, George Stewart. I think it's gonna be his, it is his third year now in a row of doing this. And he's great. And we, in fact, I just jumped off a, a, a call, a Zoom call with him. We're preparing for tomorrow night where we're going to do the global grants training, which I know you're represented there, which is terrific. In fact, I, I just went through and I think all but five clubs in the district will be there tomorrow. Why? Well, because we're that good and it's that cool. And it's virtual, which I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir with you guys online works so well because it's online. I don't have to leave my chair and I can get stuff done and I don't have to drive and, and get lost and uh, not to mention COVID you know, and what that all entails. So I'm keeping my, myself pretty close to, the, to home these days and uh, 
So anyway, the training is tomorrow night at 6 p.m. You know about it. You already signed up. That's great. I don't need to sell that. And John Bell will be helping again with district grants. He already did the bulk of his work for this year in getting all the district grant money allocated to, I think, 33 grants in the end of the day. 33 different clubs submitted. Uh, not, no, not 30. I think it was about 20 clubs submitted at least one grant. Some did two or three. That's why it ends up around 33. We ran out of money. We only allocated 50, originally 50,000. We upped it to 55. We used that up by the end of April, early May. And so we've put a wait list together and there's three clubs on that wait list that are hoping that more district grant money might become available. And we'll see, it might. And then uh, Peace Fellowships, we have a, ambass a Peace Fellow in our district who's a alumnus of this, of the program. She went to Bradford University in England and, and did a certificate program in peace and conflict resolution paid for by our district. So I turned to her and said, I know right now you're taking a break from Rotary, but would you be willing to help me if some, somebody applies for a peace fellowship and wants to be in our district, wants to get supported by our district? And she said she would. So that's Carrie, you might know her, and then me. So these are the things I'd like to cover today briefly. I know we're, we're already moving along here. Recognition, uh, foundation themes I want to focus on. Recognition, tools and training, communication and, and publicizing. Okay, um, now this one, I hope you can read it. It looks, it's clear on my screen, but I wanted to show you how our district has done. Uh, and the year is closed, you know, on June 30th, but because funds sometimes come in late, in fact, over $90,000 of monies were sent in by clubs in June. And they're, they're already on the books now, but there could be more checks that are still being processed and credit card postings that may not have occurred yet. So this number is only gonna rise, but right now it shows in, in the column you see that's shaded in, in uh, teal, annual fund. You can see five years of history. Of course, the fifth year is this year, which is brand new. So at the moment, we've given nothing. But we have a goal. The goal is very low for this year, 67,000, which means that most clubs probably haven't put in their goals in the um, Rotary Club Central. If you would like help, I, don't, I didn't check to see. I suspect you guys already put your goals in, but if you need help, just give me a ring and we can go through that online and I can help you with that very easily. But a number of clubs probably just haven't done their goals. Uh, looks like about only a third have. But this far, thus far for this year, $301,000 has been committed to the annual fund. But I was uh, educated this, af this afternoon that a little bit of that went to what's called the Disaster Relief Fund, specifically a fund that's set up for crises that might occur in, around the world by COVID-19. COVID-19 brought quite a bit of money worldwide to this disaster response program, which issues small grants like $25,000 to help offset some of the expenses for PPE, ventilators, critically needed things. And our district got one of those, in fact, and submitted uh, 5,000 to five different hospitals around the Central Florida area with a disaster response grant. Each district was allotted a maximum of one of those special grants and you didn't have to use any matching money. So it, it's straight up money that came out of the World Fund uh, and it, it was a great thing. That up, I think they're over $5 million when I looked last time. Over 200 grants have been, so that means 200 districts applied for and received up to 25,000 each. And, and that's a great thing, $5 million. So that put a squeeze on the foundation, which is, uh, you probably will hear uh, tomorrow that they had to cut away the 50% match for cash for global grants. And that's just a, a factor of life that probably for a while, the income for the funds that are invested at the foundation are gonna be depressed because the stock market's gotten beat up and interest rates are really low, so any of their fixed income's probably pretty beat up. And then all the money they 
just recently sent out for disaster relief for COVID also put a squeeze. So they figured they saved about $7 million by eliminating the cash 50% match. Maybe it'll come back someday, but we don't know. But they are preserving the one-to-one -one match for DDF for global grants. So thank God for that. Uh, but 300 1,000 is not bad. Um, when you consider, you look at the other two years that we have, other three years, and that's one, at least on par with last, with 1819 and, and 1718. Uh, I'm not sure why 1617 was so good. Um, I'd have to think back on what was going on that year. Uh, but um, that was the 100 year anniversary of the foundation. Yes. And like, I, we had like, I had the birthday and I was, and I was, um, I, was, um, I gave, the highest amount donated that year and that is why we had so much ddf this year is uh i think i gave like five thousand dollars personally or four thousand something personally yeah i'm going to get to you in a minute but that you your generosity is amazing i Thank you. i have access to reports now that i've never been able to have access to because i'm a drfc <laughs> so all of a sudden it's like a kid in a candy shop so i can see things that i had no idea were out there um I've always wondered, I'd like to know where people are in their giving, if they're close to another level or award or whatever it is, and, and now I can see all that. So uh, you, you are uh, an all-star. I will get to you, you cover that in a minute. Uh, your whole club is terrific. And, and so I'm, I'm coming here in awe of what another small club in the district is able to accomplish. Last week I was bragging to Castleberry, another small club, 10 active members, or 13 maybe, 13, all the, you know, total of 13, and yet they get so much done, so many projects completed. They won't give up anything that they used to do when they were 30-something members. They kept every project, and they support it, and, and they cover for each other, and, and uh, it's great. So anyway, that's where we stand as a district. Uh, you your club, as you all well know, became 100% Paul Harris Fellow Club in 2019-2020, which was terrific. And I just, you know, have a, a lot of gratitude for that. It's not easy to do. And our club pulled it off in 12-13. And it, it's a tough go to, to make happen. We were sitting in the maybe the 30s members, mid-30s, high-30s. So it was a bit of work to get everyone up to that Paul Harris level, but we accomplished it. Um, we're nowhere near that again, but I made a plea to, I think, Ann Matthews at the foundation when I had a chance to sit with her one day face to face. I would never do it in writing, but I, I asked her why you can't do it more than once, and she didn't really know why she didn't give me like a really rock solid answer for why a club can't achieve it again since we do have turnover and new people come but um, maybe someday they'll but you've got it you got you should have your banner now i hope and if not i'll make sure you i'll find it somehow do you have it already your banner no no okay uh, we so, due to the due to the uh coronavirus i don't think anybody attended the banquet yeah, uh, I didn't go in my club. I wanted to, but it's too risky. It was way too risky for me. But I saw photographs. None of them were ma wearing masks, but mm -hmm. that's just me. You know, wow, I can't believe that. Whatever. Uh, I wouldn't do it. So anyway, I, I wanted to give some special recognition. I just went back over the, the past approximately one year. So I hope I didn't miss anybody. There's many, many more e-club people to talk about if you want to go back in time further, but just picking the, the beginning of last Rotary year all the way through to the present, which is only another extra week or so, we pick up four people that moved up a level or joined Paul Harris Fellowship. Uh, and these are the four names that I identified. And so I'm, I'm really grateful for all of you folks. I don't know if they're on this call, are any, are any of you on? Any of these four on the call? You're all listed as members. I don't know, Mark. I think I know Joe Kelly. He yeah, nobody, uh, no one is on the call right now. Yeah. Wasn't he with Lake Mary at one point? Yes, he was the president of Lake Mary Club. Yeah. 
Yeah, I he's, I also ran into him one time as a uh, broker at at uh, Morgan Stanley. But yeah, yeah. So that's the Joe. Yeah, he's a great guy. He was our AG one year at Oviedo, and the others I do not know or have forgotten. I apologize, but thank you. Please express my gratitude to those people for their recent moves, which helped you to get that hundred uh, percent. There's three major donors in your organization at the moment. There may have been others in the past, but there are three now, if, I, if I'm accurate in what I see. And additionally, four of you, some of those same people, are also benefactors, which means you, they or you have given at least $1,000 to an endowed fund, or more likely, you made a commitment in your will or estate plan for at least a thousand dollars of your remains to be donated to the Rotary Foundation. Oh, they can't have my remains. No, my, no. my remains are going to be buried. Remains, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Uh, so, anyway, benefactors are another way you can help out the foundation, and a new opportunity for this year: hundred percent Rotary Promise Club. Since you are this year achieving the hundred percent, Paul Harris. If you want to go for a, a double, go for the 100% Rotary Promise Club. You already have four, and that means, I guess, nine more of you would have to make that commitment, but maybe it's within the realm. You don't actually have to spend $1,000. Uh, I did it last year when I gave, uh, there was a million-dollar dinner that was held a little, bit, like, little over a year ago, and I decided to contribute. My wife and I decided to contribute to that. And by doing that, all of a sudden in the mail, I get this thing saying, thank you for becoming a benefactor. And I received an award at my club, a nice little certificate in a, in a folder and everything, kind of like your Paul Harris certificate, a little smaller. And they said I was a benefactor and I got scared. <laughs> what? Yeah. And I looked it up and I said, well, because I gave to an endowed fund for peace and conflict resolution, that entitled me to become uh, more than a thousand. It was more than a thousand dollars, a benefactor. So that's how I got it. But I think most people get it because they they fill out a, a form. I can give you that form if you don't have it. It's on rotary.org for committing to making that. And it's it's not binding legally, I don't believe, but it's it's a, an intention on your part to have a gift made uh, in your memory after your demise. So if that's something that you could get excited for, it's not the most exciting end uh, point, but it is something of a cool thing that your club could get. And I suspect there's a banner for that, but I don't know what it looks like yet. All right, so uh, things you can do uh, as foundation chairs, I encourage somebody in your club to do it. You probably are already doing that. Look at your club recognition summary, the Paul Harris Society report, make sure it's accurate, see who's giving. Uh, uh, you'll get a banner report, shows you where you are relative to 100% Paul Harris giving or 100% or um, sustaining member, $100 or more to the foundation, an E-Ray where you're at with that. So, uh, and all the, these other reports should be accessible at least to, I think the club president, club secretary and, and the foundation chair. Um, well, I also just wanted to mention that, uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, Phyllis, I mean, the generosity that I, I see that you've shown to this, to, to our eyes, just amazing. And I, and I now have lists of a, a number of, a small number of other people that are in your league, but there are very few of you that have given, I, I'm trying to be respectful of your privacy, but uh, I mean, it is a, a great thing to see. Uh, I'm moving along myself, but I'm not in your league yet. Uh, hopefully I'll get there someday. But, um, you know, whatever you can do uh, on an individual level, I love Rotary Direct. I don't know, I, I didn't look up, I can, can look up who's on it, but it's the easiest way to give to the foundation. If you're not building into your, to your dues structure somehow or, or your monthly or your quarterly billing, uh, the easy, the next easiest way to do it is Rotary Direct, where you make a commitment 
personally, and it comes right off a credit card. You don't even see it. If you do $85, if you can swing that a month, you'll be moving up another Paul Harris level every year. You won't even realize it. And then by June, you'll make it. So tools and training. We've moved online for the rest of the year. Uh, that's for sure. Tomorrow night will be the Global Grant uh, Management Seminar. So that's, that's going to be the, the bulk of the training now accomplished. We did the, the district grant training a couple of months ago, and that went well. Um, actually, back in January, I should say. That was in person. Uh, but we, um, we did the seminar, the, the training assembly online, and now we're going to do the global grant seminar online. Uh, I am off also offering training for those who request it on an as-needed basis because I know that people come and go from Rotary and positions change and in order to be able to, to be able to stay up with things your club needs to perhaps have new training done or maybe to emphasize something more or, or clear up a confusion. So I'm, we're always willing, our whole committee, I'm sure I'm speaking for everyone, but I'm willing to do it and I'm sure George would do it. Uh, assist you and, and, and Bob Shadow, of course, would be happy to help you with that. So if a, a need arises during the year, don't hesitate to reach out for that. Uh, I am going to be working on a project bank, an idea bank for district grants. Not that we lack for ideas in the district, but I was going to first go and compile a list of those grants we've done to give you an idea for newer, newer clubs that may not have familiarity with how district grant money can be used, I'll give some examples and then provide some other sources that can be used to, uh, to stimulate thought there. We're going to document share on the DACDB. That looks like a very nice new system that they were, it's not new, but it's very easy to access. I, I was able to put a revised form on there last night myself without any help from anybody. So that was great. Um, if somebody needs help with putting something on the DAC, uh, definitely reach out to me if it's foundation related. If not, I'll point you in the right direction. But there's a folder. It's very easy to get to when you go on the DAC, the Rotary District 6980.org website. You'll log in because you do need to do that. I checked that this morning. You can't get to the documents without logging in first. But once you log in, you click the big button. I think I have a slide for that to show you. Yeah, if you log in, you're gonna to get to, I can't show you the whole screen here, but I wanted to have a little snippet of it. If you see where this documents tab, uh, button is up at the top, that blue button, once you're logged in, you click on that, you get to see what's in the middle there. The acronyms, Taste the College Park, 40th Annual Regatta. These, some of those are things that individual clubs posted which I guess you're permitted to do. And then for the district committees, there's folders for each of those. The one on the bottom, you'll see foundation documents. That's gonna be where I'll put anything that's foundation related, including updated DDF tracking. If you were trying to get a project funded for a global grant and you wanna know who, which clubs have money left, you'll go to that folder and find the latest tracking form to see which clubs you might want to approach. So I encourage you to use that folder scheme, very easy. And if you want to put in, in things, I, I suspect as long as you have a certain access level, you can do that, or you can get help from somebody that does. Doc, I've been uh, putting a lot of things up on there for years, and there are public folders where we've put the newsletters and stuff in the past for the district when I was yes. at district level. Um, yes, there are public folders there that you don't need to be able to log into DACDB. Then you have the private folders of confidential information. Right. Okay, well, let me know if there's any problem. It looked to me like you, now I can't always tell now with my level what can be accessed without that level, but I'm thinking that those folders should be accessible the foundation folder. You might not be able to edit them, but you should be able to see the documents because they're meant for that. So, 
Uh, internal communication, uh, I'm not, again, telling you anything you folks don't already know. Internal to Rotary is what I mean here. Uh, the district newsletter is something that I plan to use. I sent my submissions already to Stephanie Fernand. She's up in the villages. Uh, you can find her email on the DAC if you don't have that. So if there's anything you want to announce that your club is doing that you'd like the whole district to know about, that's the easiest way to do it through Stephanie. Um, and those come out about the middle of the month, I guess. So we've got another week or so before we'll see the next one. P-mail, for those who are familiar with it, and if you're not and you have access to it, it's a useful tool to reach groups of people that you might want to target for information. There may be a certain decorum on using P-mail, and it may be already stipulated by your level, or it may be something you just have to know, who are you permitted to P-mail or not. But generally, you want to restrict that to to those who really need to know it. You, you don't want to email, P-mail the whole district because that, you know, that's not something you should do very often. And probably without the, if you get the district governor to approve it, then you probably can. So that's one way to go. But P-mail is very nice. Club presentations like I'm doing now and reaching out, again, you probably do that, but your folks can go and visit online now anywhere you want and offer your yourselves to go and and become the speaker for a club it's a great way to get your story out and i did it uh not that long ago for polio i was invited to castleberry i spoke there the rotary showcase is a terrific program that rotary takes care of and, and it's relatively easy to use I, I do recommend you get in there on a browser like maybe Firefox, which I don't use, or I use Chrome. I could not get the showcase to post my club's activity that I wanted to post using um, Edge, Microsoft Edge. It just, it looked like everything was going along perfectly. And then at the end, when I tried to post it, I got error messages. So I discovered that, that Chrome works better. So I went in with a Chrome browser, entered everything in the showcase, and was able to post there. So I don't, have you guys done that yet on the, on the, yeah, okay. So that was something I discovered. And I believe you did put an article in the Rotarian, right? So let's, yes, sir. Yeah. We, were, we were very blessed to be in the Rotarian this March. That's really, really great. So you know about that. And so the, these are vital ways to get your story out. And outside publicity, we know about Facebook. Uh, our club has had some success with newspapers, not a whole lot. Um, local television, I don't recall it. But community magazines, we have a, a Winter Springs Oviedo Life. I don't know what where you all live since you're you're more dispersed. That may not work as well for your club. But if you have more of you in one place than another, you might be able to use the community magazines. They're free and their photographers are good, and they, they do a really a nice high quality. Our, our fundraiser was done there, our blockbuster movie night, which we were able to do fortunately last year in the fall. Uh, it was very successful. Downton Abbey was our theme movie, and everyone dressed up in costumes, and the Winter Springs Oviedo Life photographer and, and writer came and took pictures and documented it and got the story out to our community. And of course, Twitter and Instagram. I don't know. Are you folks big users of social media? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. That's how we get some of our international visitors. I think uh, th four of the last five meetings we've had, we've had an international visitor. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, well, I thank you so much. I don't know if there's any questions you want to ask me at this time or things I can look into and get back to you. I'm still learning the ropes here. Can you explain to them that recognition that's hanging on my uh, virtual background? The Paul Harris Society. Uh, the Paul Harris Society. Yeah. Is that the one you're, I see on the background there? Let me close my share, I guess. Uh, how do I do that? Not a new share. Uh, anyway, I see yours. So 
employer society is where you make a, a commitment. It's a small form that you fill out. And if you're in a position, which you may or may not be, to make a thousand dollar gift over a year to the Rotary Foundation, and you can do that in different ways. You don't have to put it in the annual fund. You have choices, but if you wanted to give it to the annual fund, the share uh, account, then your club will get DDF to use in three years. So I did it and I've been doing that. It's an easy way. I do $84 a month, which because my club asked me to give $100 in my dues, the $84 gets me well over enough to do the $1,000 a year. So that's how I do it. I put it on my credit card. It's posted every, like the second of the month. So June 2nd, there was a posting. And I don't even think about it. It's all taken care of for me. So Rotary Direct, which if you go to rotary.org, sign in, you can search for Rotary Direct and you can fill out the application, choose how you want to donate the money. That's the easiest way to, to get into And you you still have to fill out the Paul Harris Society application, which is separate. And that's where you really tell Rotary, you're really planning to do that short of a, a financial crisis, which these things come up. If you have a, a tough year and that's not possible to swing, then you, you skip a year. But we have a number of people in our district that about 53, I think, that are consistently doing the thousand a year and are, are signed up to do it. They filled out the forms and agreed to do it. So that becomes, I believe 3% or so of Rotarians are Paul Harris Society members. They get the Chevron that you see in the background, um, Dr. O, it hangs yeah. underneath your Paul Harris pin. So it, it fits right in, there's a little hole for it. And I think it's, it's a great way to show your commitment to the foundation. People see the, that Chevron, they know right away, hey, these, this person really cares about the foundation. And, and I think the $84, $85 is a very reasonable way to go. And I also get airline miles. So what's wrong with that? Yeah. Um, so that's if you get the Rotary uh, credit card, which I happen to mention when uh, Gary Huang, Rotary International President, gave me my, um, I think it was my uh, bequest five um, at the Rotary Foundation dinner in 2015 uh, when he came. Uh, I talked to, when I spoke about the credit card and uh, this was a foundation dinner and it was all people who gave to the foundation and one uh, several people came running up how do you get the credit card you just go online to rotary.org or in your or look it up in your magazine and apply for the credit card and then pay all your bills on it um i just cashed in two hundred dollars in rewards and then i turn around uh, rotary gets i think three percent from every one of your purchases straight to the foundation from the bank and then you get the rewards and you can turn around and give the rewards. So almost all of my, um, almost all of my Paul Harris Society money comes from my credit card rewards that's on a credit card from the Rotary Foundation. That's great. Yeah, that I, that I haven't done. I use a, a Marriott rewards card for mine. So I get the, it, the vacate, it, it gives me uh, hotel points that you can use for a night stay if we ever go to a hotel again. I've got more points than I, we haven't gone anywhere since March. I canceled a trip to Europe and I canceled the trip to Boston that we would have been still up there for another few days. But Boston won't, Mass won't let us in now <laughs> with the amount of COVID we have here. We're persona non grata around the world. You mentioned the Peace Fellowships earlier and the um, polio. You can also, people, uh, donate your miles to allow people to fly and Peace Fellows to fly and uh, uh, people with uh, flying for the Polio Foundation to go and uh, give drops. So they do take points. Yeah. I haven't done that before, but that's, that sounds like a great, great approach. So. All right, well, I, I don't have anything more to share at this point, but I really would, oh, thank you, thank you. 
I would love to see anyone who would like to join, even if you weren't planning to go tomorrow night, if you have some time, six to eight o'clock, bring your dinner, <laughs> sit in front of the, the, uh, the laptop or whatever, and, and, uh, and learn a little bit more about global grants than you might have known. And maybe most clubs probably won't do global grants, but, but that's fine. At least they know. American Sign Language clapping. Clapping, yes. clapping in American Sign Language, guys. <laughs> okay, we can clap too. Thank you. Great job.